to be the closest for years, following yesterday's assassination attempt on Alan Bastard. speedy and rapid recovery. Dear Lebanon, we are gathered here today to mourn a man who has been taken from us at so early an age before he could learn the need for humility, charity, generosity and honesty and who therefore will undoubtedly go to hell where he will be forced to consume his own ordeal while giant maggots feed on his agonized innards. <laughs> and screaming demons with white hot whips of barbed wire torment his defenseless buttocks for all eternity and may God have mercy upon his soul. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Darling, darling, wake up. I've just had the most awful dream. Hello, Piers. It was awful. I was in bed with Alan and... <laughs> if I may continue, on the sensitive issue of capital punishment, I say to honourable members, use your conscience. As always, this will be a free vote, and there will be no whipping. <laughs> However, may I say to my honourable friends, that if they think they can vote against capital punishment, and still have a future in this party, I humbly beg them to think again. <laughs> Tragedy. Here are five bullets. Still not dead. <laughs> no, of course it wasn't me. Well, I thought it was you. Sarah! Oi! Oi! <laughs> Sorry, Dad. Got to dash. <laughs> Jeff Decade. Chief Crime Reporter, Family Circle. Got a couple of words for the press? Yeah. This all. we speak, kept alive only by the miracle of medical technology. I say that if we do not vote to bring back capital punishment, then what unpopular politician would be safe from the assassin's bullet? Order! 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 The question is, the bill be read the third time. that 
surprisingly strong finishing burst from Fletcher Dervish. He's by Fletcher Dervish out of the former Honourable Miss Lavinia Tidmarsh. Deb of the Year in 1951. No mean ride herself. The atmosphere here is as tense as Ken Dodd passing a tax office. Now let's see how they're betting. It's bottled two to one against the rope. Even money levels you devils for its restoration. And only Burlington Bertie, 100 to 30, a tie. This has now become too close to call. But of course, before the Bastard shooting, you could have got 100 to 1 against the death penalty. Who then would have risked their neck on a flutter on a bet like that? But I see now they've just started to come back. They'll soon be under speaker's orders. I'll return you now to the debate. Order! Order! Eyes to the right, 305. Nose to the left, 305. Oh. I declare the vote a tie. But I haven't voted yet. Oh. Hello, peers. Gentlemen, Jeff Decade, Chief Lobby Correspondent, the Spiritualist Weekly. So, what's it like returning from the dead then? It's very invigorating, Mr. Dickhead. You should try it. Here, Alan, are you pleased capital punishment's been restored? <laughs> Has Rose Kennedy got a black dress? I don't know. Do you want me to find out? <laughs> Alan! <laughs> Please, ladies, gentlemen, using those terms loosely. I do have a prepared statement if you could just slip your mouths into neutral for a second. Oh, could I have this chair, please? Oh, I can't walk. Thank you. Ah! I don't have to tell you journalists what it's like to hover on the brink of death, as most of you are like that every lunchtime. <laughs> Suffice it to say that I owe my miraculous recovery to Chief Amlumi, a brilliant Amazonian spiritual healer. Uh, sorry, Alan, Alan, uh, could you spell that? What? Well, everything you just said. For exclusive rights to further amazing disclosures about my miraculous recovery, there will now be a grubby, nay, sordid auction in which tabloid journalists will bid absurd sums of money, starting now. A spiritual weekly, 50 quid and I know Oh, go on, Sarah. Please. Um... You won't last long. Okay. <laughs> go on, just once more. But I can't do it with the light off. Well, put it on, then. Here, here. Unprecedented uproar <sighs> broke out in the Commons today. Oh, with expression, <laughs> with expression, woman. <laughs> Unprecedented uproar broke out in the Commons today. Alan Beresford... All right, that's enough, that's enough. <laughs> Alan Mustard, back from the dead, quotes from £5,000, interviews from £50,000. I see, well, that's very generous of you, Mrs... Mrs Torben. And how much were you thinking of donating? £50,000! <laughs> no, 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 that's all right. Every little helps. <laughs> I am, in fact, in the throes of setting up a charity with the very purpose of funnelling cash to Chief Amlumi. Yeah. Well, of course I'll take a check. Central Amazon Spiritual Healers. <laughs> it is a bit of a mouthful, isn't it? But why not just put the initials? C-A-S-H. <laughs> all right, no, no. Thank you, Mrs. Torbert, on behalf of all the poor people. You're not trying that cash con again. Is that why you faked your own shooting? So you could trick poor old ladies out of their life savings? Sarah! I didn't fake my own shooting. It was on television. It's already a much-requested item on points of view. <laughs> There I was, riddled with bullets, lying in a pool of my own blood, and you call me a fake. I'm sorry, darling. <laughs> I've really missed you, you know. What? Yeah. Even though you're a jumped-up little pillock like Daddy always said you were. Come and sit down. I thought I'd lost you forever. The thought of never making love to you again. What do you mean, again? Horror of a long, lonely widowhood without you, without sex. Oh, come off it, Sarah. You without sex is like Leon Britton without warts. I mean it, 
darling. <coughs> if you were shot, then why isn't there? Why isn't there? And why can't you One million. Thank you. Oh, I suppose I should have laid the bet off. But frankly, when you bet ten grand at 100 to 1 that capital punishment would be brought back, I thought another typical mug punter with more money than sense. <laughs> oh, well, win some, lose some. It's not my money. Admirable attitude. <laughs> France, convicted felons were broken on the wheel. Yes. They were strapped to a wagon wheel, their limbs systematically smashed, then they were dragged through the street, screaming for mercy, until the executioner dispatched them with a dagger through the heart. Now that's what I call justice. punishment was to deter would-be murderers, not to excite these sadists. They obviously haven't been paying attention at Tory party conference, Piers. The <laughs> Gravel <laughs> MacDonald. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I was recently invited to the United States of America by the Judicial Euthanasia Corporation of Louisiana, Inc. <laughs> to participate in their 105th annual Basson Rouge Darkie Hunt and Bun. And to view their progressive execution techniques. And I must say, I was most impressed by their lethal injection method. Now, this is a very simple, painless method, which anyone can operate, as I discovered, when they very kindly allowed me to dispatch one of their prisoners myself. A certain Montgomery Abraham Wilson Coloured gentleman arrested for non-payment of parking fines who, through some administrative error, found himself on death row. <laughs> <laughs> However, one should not allow a simple computer glitch, as they call it in the States, uh, to detract from the essential humanity of this method of life termination. Lethal injection is a modern, forward-looking punishment which we must adopt yeah, to yeah, prove yeah. that we are a modern, forward-looking nation. Yeah. Squash them! Pull their beaks off! Make them drink tap water! Order! Order! Mr. Bastard! Mr. Speaker! As one of the select few members of this house to have actually survived an assassination attempt, I believe, I believe that my views on the method of execution hold some validity. Yeah. And these views have been greatly influenced by my miraculous recovery at the hands of Chief Amlumi. For he has instilled in me a, a respect, a, nay, nay, a love of the natural world and, and everything in it. I admit that until my shooting, I thought that greens were the overcooked vegetables we Tories were forced to eat at public school. <laughs> so let us apply the ecological approach to killing murderers. Mm, mm, mm. Lethal injection. Mm. <laughs> the minister said it was entirely painless. Well, I don't think there are many of us on this side of the house who could possibly endorse a punishment that didn't hurt at all, could we? <laughs> No, no. So what about electrocution? A, a good old fry-up, so to speak. <laughs> alas, 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 I fear that the discharge of such large amounts of smoke and charred flesh into the atmosphere can only have a detrimental effect on the ozone layer. <laughs> uh, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, whilst I am drawn to Dame Josie's breaking upon the wheel, 
I fear that dragging crippled felons through the city streets can only add to traffic chaos. <laughs> no, no, I can endorse only the good old-fashioned rope. Hang on. Simple, aesthetically pleasing, and using renewable resources. Wood, hemp, and good old British criminals. <laughs> We should be proud to revive this ancient English craft. <laughs> but with one important difference. To bring hanging, kicking and screaming into the 1990s... Televised public execution. <laughs> Carrying out public executions in front of a large ticket-buying crowd, we can both increase deterrence and make capital punishment self-financing. Yeah. If not actually yeah. profit-making. Yeah. Yeah. And you're really going to ask the minister for my old job back? Of course, Sydney. Just as soon as my solicitor phones to confirm you've put all your freehold property in my name. Hello? Excellent. <laughs> Congratulations, Sydney. We're in business. Oh. Well, I'm glad it's to be hanging, sir. We blisses have always been hangmen. And you can't teach an old dog new tricks, can you? No. no. Well, I wouldn't know, actually, Sydney. I've only ever owned one dog. <laughs> I was seven. My uncle gave me a lovely, friendly little bloodhound puppy called Sherlock. He had big floppy ears, <laughs> big floppy eyes. <laughs> floppy paws. Ah, oh, sweet. Yes. But when I tried to teach it to smoke, <laughs> it peed on my jail Nelson Mandela poster. So I lynched it. <laughs> Ever heard the phrase a hang dog expression, Sydney? <laughs> well, I hope you did it properly, sir, because if you don't do it properly, the head can come right off. I know, I know. I used it as a paperweight until it went mouldy. <laughs> oh, you are a one, sir. Yes, I am. Minister! Stard? Oh, uh, this is Sidney Bliss, the former hangman. And future hangman, too, I hope, sir. Good heavens, do backbenchers still work in these sordid little offices? I'd quite forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, congratulations on your promotion, by the way. Minister for Law and Order, eh? Uh, that's right. Minister for Law and Order? We haven't had one of those before, have we, sir? Uh, not in England, no, but they're very big in South Africa. <laughs> And the PM thought I was just the chap to look after police, prisons, deportations, executions, disappearances, amputations. <laughs> amputations? Oh, there I go again, leaking our next manifesto. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, for start, the House's rejection of lethal injection has cost me a pretty penny. I mean, I was on a very generous commission from the Euthanasia Corporation of Louisiana, Inc. Well, never fear, Minister. I have a little proposal that will more than make up the shortfall. Oh, pray continue. As the Minister for Law and Order, presumably you will decide who gets the contract to build these gallows. I shall be taking bids, yes, for up to 50 centres of execution. 50? Well, I would like here and now to formally tender for the contract to build the gallows, and I guarantee I will undercut any other bidder and give you a finder's fee of £25,000 payable in the currency of your choice. Uh, £50,000. That's what I said, £50,000. <laughs> Excellent. Then in line with government thinking about cutting red tape and bureaucracy, you have just won yourself the contract. Oh. Uh, but just make sure that the gallows you provide prove serviceable, that's all. Oh, I guarantee it. You see, while I was in South America, I snapped up rather a large tract of tropical rainforest, including some very fine mahogany. Oh, mahogany would make wonderful gallows, sir. Very strong, and it takes a lovely polish. Mm. Yes, well, it seems to have been a most uh, satisfactory meeting. Oh, uh, oh, Sir Greville, I, I think Mr Bastard has forgotten something. I don't think I have, Sidney. You were going to ask the Minister for me old job back. Very well. Minister, could he have his old job back? No. There you are, Sidney. Can't say I didn't try. <laughs> oh, but, sir, why? But you're not getting any younger, Bliss. You must realise we have scores of eager young sadists applying every day. We must go through the correct channels. Oops. But, sir, Mr. Bastard has just bribed you. That is one of the correct channels. <laughs> oh, but, sir, these other applicants, they're just amateurs. 
keen amateurs, Sidney. Yes, but they're not qualified, sir. I am. I carried out the last execution in these islands. Yes, but 1964 was a very long time ago, please. Now, I'm not talking about 1964. I'm talking about 1974. Lord Lucan. <laughs> Lord Lucan? Shut up, please. Yes, and if I don't get my old job back, I'm going to spill the beans to the newspapers. Well, congratulations, Bliss. I can see you're still the best man for the job. Oh, thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you, Lex. That was Bonza. <laughs> well, let's hope the record gets to number one, eh? God knows Poland needs the money. <laughs> Now, what can I say about my next guest? A man who was gunned down in broad daylight, yet who last week miraculously returned from death's door to cast the vote that brought hanging back to this fair country. You all know who I mean. Please give a warm welcome to Alan Stringham Up Bastard. <laughs> You're looking great. And you look ghastly, but then, of course, you're in Australia, no? <laughs> so, tell me, can you remember the shooting? I mean, what went through your mind as these bullets thudded into your defenceless body? Oh. Well, I remember thinking, well, thank God it's me and not Mrs. Thatcher. <laughs> and thank God now I don't have to see Geoffrey Archer's new play. <laughs> so, ah, you didn't lose consciousness immediately. <laughs> and then I woke up two weeks later in a grass hut in the middle of the Amazonian jungle with half a dozen naked native girls dancing round my bedside. <laughs> I thought I'd died and gone to heaven. <laughs> no, but these were, in fact, Chief Amlumi's handmaid. Correct. So what exactly was going on, Alan? Powerful medicine, Kerry. Powerful medicine. Ancient and mystic healing rites, of which we in the so-called developed world know absolutely nothing. Oh, does this mean you'll be leaving the Tory party and joining the Greens? <laughs> Hardly, hardly. I think one can combine Tory party policies and Green party politics quite satisfactorily. Ah, so it'll be a sort of blue-green. A turquoise, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and this is why you've started your new charity. Central Amazon Spiritual Healers. That's right. And I'm hoping to get Prince Charles. Central Amazon Spiritual Healers. Now, that's C-A-S-H. Correct. But so far, donations have been... Donations are checks made payable to C-A-S-H. That's absolutely right. And if any viewers would like to send a check... Made payable to cash... Yes. Well... <laughs> What of it? <laughs> Just a coincidence. It's a coincidence that this is the seventh charity you set up with the initials C-A-S-H? I think it is vitally important that we in the there West... There was conservative action for South Humberside. <laughs> I love Lex's new record. Doesn't his voice go down well with the Pet Shop Boys? I can't wait for the video. The Christian approach to society handbooks. I had nothing to do with any of those organisations. I was taking it myself. I sent them money. I think that this uh, photocopied statement from your Swiss bank account does suggest otherwise. Jesus. <laughs> and of course, there was a campaign for the alleviation of severe hernias, Christmas appeal for Saharan horse breeders, cash, 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 cash. You trying to say something? <laughs> What I'm saying, sport, is that you are a liar, a cheat, a fraud, a freeloader, and someone who would fake his own shooting if there was money in it. We'll take a break there. Well, I hope you have a book next year's summer holiday came back because you are a dead body. Yeah, we are, folks. Another Craig Grad exclusive. What? The first live death threat in front of 10 million no, viewers. It was a joke. Don't go away. It was a joke. <laughs> I just can't believe it. I've already given Alan £50,000 for Chief Alumi. It's true, Piers. Now, if we can find out how he did it, we can make him pay to buy our silence. Yes. Did what? The shooting, Piers. What we need is proof. Something incriminating. Can you think of anything? Anything at all, no matter how small or insignificant? Yes. But Clarissa says size isn't important. I'm talking about evidence, Piers, not the size of your clues. In Alan's office, perhaps. Oh, don't be silly, Sarah. Alan would never leave anything incriminating lying around the office. Oh, I know what you mean. No, no, no. He'd lock it up in that big new armoured steel cupboard with a combination lock that he installed the morning of the shooting. Piers, that's it! 
Oh, oh, let's get hot, bitch. <laughs> now, I found this when I was looking through Alan's knickers. I thought it was some tart's phone number, but it, it could be the combination to that cupboard. Oh, I forgot the tart's phone number. <laughs> Senor Bastardo, my mommy. Oh, All in good time, Jimenez. Drink? No, no. I have sworn never to let strong drink pass my lips until we have driven out of our Basque homeland the hated Castilian oppressor. Pounds. Thank you very much. Five thousand? This is not enough. But Jimenez, we agreed. <laughs> Five thousand pounds? We agreed ten thousand pounds. <laughs> My dear Jimenez. <laughs> I'm a conservative politician. Why should I keep my word? Because this time you are not wearing your bulletproof vest, senor. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> How much? Another five thousand. A potatoes? <laughs> Pendejo. Bounds. No, that's, that, that's fine. That's fine. That's very fair. That's my pleasure. <laughs> yeah. Perfecto. Now, if I could just take my rifle back. Voici. Como no. Right. Now I'll take the whole 10,000 back. <laughs> this rifle, he is not loaded. This pistola, she is loaded. Your 10,000 and race you 10,000. Muchas gracias. No. 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 Well, no VAT, aren't I the lucky boy? One good reason why I shouldn't shoot you dead now, Piers. Yes. What is it? The gun. She is not loaded. <laughs> I heard that man. What else did you hear? Everything. It's just as we thought. We? Mm. Sarah, Kerry, Grout and I. You arranged your whole shooting. And you used my gun. How could you do such a thing? I did it for Margaret, Piers. <laughs> Who's Margaret Pierce? No, I mean Margaret Thatcher. You know, blonde woman, loud voice, very shy and retiring. 
Mrs. Thatcher's retiring? Yeah. No! Look, just get out of the cupboard! Get out of the cupboard! Shh. 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 Now, look. You know that Mrs. Thatcher's all in favour of capital punishment. Yes. But every year, Parliament refuses to bring it back. So this year, I thought, how can I help this poor, darling woman bring back hanging? I just, no, that's Dennis. <laughs> then suddenly, it hit me. I know, I thought, I'll stage a killing so appalling, so horrific, so, so, so threatening to the status quo. So you faked your own shooting to help Mrs. Thatcher. That's brilliant. But how did you do it? <laughs> I'm not going to tell you, am I, Piers? If I told you, you'd go scuttling off to Sarah and carry Kamala cock grab. No, 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 I, I give you my word as a Fletcher Dervish, and no Fletcher Dervish has ever portrayed a confidence since our ancestors arrived with William the Conqueror in 1067. No, 1066. No, 1067, they overslept. All right, Piers. You've persuaded me. You're far too stupid to ever betray me. Oh, thank you, Alan. <laughs> I'll show you how I did it. You go and stand on the plastic sheet in the corner, and I'll load the rifle. Shouldn't I have the bulletproof vest on? No, you don't need it, Piers. It's not necessary. No, no, I'm sure. I'm sure. No, no, it's overdressing. Really, you don't. You don't need it at all. No, no, I'm all right. You look, Pierce. Right. <laughs> Alan Bastard is not in at the moment. If you have recently made a donation to CASH. Alan. Alan, darling, it's me, Sarah. Um, I've had the most awful accident, darling, in Parliament Square. The police have just arrived. I was in your Bentley, darling. Oh, my God. Darling, is the car all right? This is Kerry Grant, with a hands-on exclusive from the offices of Tory MP Alan Bastard. And with the help of Piers Fletcher Dervish, Hello. we're going to reenact the fake shooting of Bastard. Now, Piers, perhaps you tell us what happened. Well, Kerry, um, Alan had on the bulletproof vest under his clothes, and his accomplice was stationed on a nearby building uh, with this high-powered rifle. Yeah, and uh, Bastard's hitman just let rip, right? Yes, yes. Well, Alan was perfectly safe, of course, because he had on the bulletproof vest. And Bastard actually demonstrated on you how effective this vest is. Oh. Yes. Yes, he can withstand the highest velocity bullet. Well, and Bastard just shot you? Yes, it was quite frightening, actually. He just fired off a volley of shots like this. Pum, 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 pum. Yeah. As we will now demonstrate once Piers passes me the gun. OK, Piers, let me have it. Pum! Sorry, you meant let me have the gun, didn't you? Um, do you want to go for a retake? Isn't that what they call it in your business? Uh, are you all right? Because uh, you should have had the bulletproof vest on. Um, don't worry, it's only tomato ketchup. It, Sarah's playing that stupid bitch. 
I don't care who you are, Alan Bastard is out right now. McGill, I've just written to you about the wood. How much? Well, look, if we can't make a profit using mahogany, we'll just have to use less expensive timber. I don't care. <laughs> just so long as it's dirt cheap. <laughs> don't give me that, McGill. Listen, I know where the bodies are buried, remember? I've been getting away with murder for years. <laughs> I know how to make a killing. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Bastard. <laughs> Reports of gunshots in this part of the building. Well, as you can see, officer, I'm perfectly all right. Well, this chap don't look too well, sir. <laughs> Jesus Christ! No, no, sir. Kerry Grout. <laughs> Man, you threatened to murder on the telly the other night. <laughs> wow! There's a first. A Tory politician who keeps his word. <laughs> what is going on? Will be the truth, the whole truth, and adding back the truth. <laughs> Police Constable Matthews, would you kindly tell the court, in your own words, what happened on the morning of November the 12th? Well, sir, I was on duty outside Mr. Parkinson's office. He'd asked me to keep casual visitors away while he was breaking in a new temporary secretary. <laughs> Suddenly, I heard several loud bangs. <laughs> Mostly from the direction of Mr. Bastard's room. So I strolled down the corridor in case there had been another attempt on his life. And what did you see? I saw the accused standing over Kerry Grout's twitching corpse, holding a smoking gun. Bastard said to me, I done him in, you got me red-handed, bang to rights. It's a fair... cop. Oh, yes, that's right, that's right. Then I did a couple of verses of I've got a lovely bunch of coconuts and did the Lambeth walk up and down the corridor. The jury will note that the accused was so lacking in remorse that he could sing and dance over a school kitchen <laughs> court. No, 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 my lad, my lad, you don't understand. He's lying. No. No, there was no accident. I never made a phone call. In fact, I spent that entire day in Yorkshire. I was making jam for the Women's Institute charity shop. <laughs> you double-dealing, two-faced bitch! The accused will be silent. She was screwing ground, that's why she's lying. <laughs> screwing? <laughs> Having an adulterous liaison, my lad. Oh, you mean nook-nooks. <laughs> Is this true, Mrs. Bastard? I cannot tell a lie, Miller. Uh, yeah, since when? <laughs> it is true, alas. I've tried since my marriage to keep my wedding vows, but Alan's bestial and violent behaviour drove me into the arms of another man, <laughs> Kerry Grout. We were very much in love. <laughs> Alan found out and he said, I'll kill that Australian gigolo rather than give you up. I will get you for this. Save! <laughs> Doesn't look very good, does it? I've been the Queen's Counsel for 43 years and I don't think I've ever seen such a hopeless case. Oh, dear me. Oh, well, never mind. Shut up! I'm not paying you two grand a day for, oh, well, never mind. I'm innocent! Uh, you've no need to keep up the pretense in front of me. Look, you said it all self. I did not do it. Oh, well, all right, you didn't do it. Uh, no need to go mad. Oh, that's it. That's it. I knew you'd come up with something if you put your mind to it. But you do not deny that in front of 16 million viewers you threatened to kill Kerry Grout. Well, of course I don't deny it. <laughs> but it's okay. As long as the spiders don't get your eyes. <laughs> See, the cockroaches are all right. Because the spiders eat up the cockroaches. But don't tell Mr. Mugabe. <laughs> is, is that a denial? Well, of course it is. Why should I want to kill Kerry Grout? <laughs> we arrived from Mars together. We're old friends. <laughs> Why should I want to murder him? Then what an odd coincidence that this man, whom you did not intend to murder, should suddenly turn up in your office as dead as the SDP. <laughs> if. 
it is a coincidence, then I think it is a conspiracy to prevent me <laughs> from becoming the first ruler of the universe in the year 2005. As predicted by Nostradamus in the ninth quatrain of the 53rd volume, when he said, Ye world, a great upheaval shall suffer. <laughs> the remnant nations shall together cleave, and the blonde bastard with noble brow shall hold the banner and wield the play. Silence in court. I will not have my court turned into a circus. Well, you shouldn't have come in drag then, should you? <laughs> if I may crave your indulgence, my lud, uh, my client is under considerable pressure. Indeed, I'd like to call an expert medical witness a world leader in his field, to testify to Mr. Um, Bastard's state of health. Very well, but you're only postponing the inevitable. Bastard's obviously guilty. And the jury should note that's just my personal opinion. Court <laughs> Chief What religion is this person? Chief Amlumi worships the sun, the moon, the spirits of thunder and the essence of the soil. Church of England. <laughs> Will you tell the court of the known side effects of a course of herbal and spiritual healing that Mr. R uh, Bastard uh, undertook? Uh, Digito de Riti Midslog. Me? I swear he took a hit of your dots, your dirty. Giri, giri, giri. You, your dick. He said, uh, could you repeat the question? <laughs> Repeat it. Digito uh, Doriti Mids Log. Mids Log? Me, me. Covi me goriti, the store dodi, lo, 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 dorti go. Um, the chief says the only known side effect is after the cure, the patient suffers weeks of hallucinations and intermittent bursts of insanity. <laughs> the crocodiles! Hey, oh, oh, oh. The accused. One final question. Uh, does Chief Am Lumi believe, uh, in his expert opinion, that the accused may have shot the deceased during a bout of uh, temporary insanity? A gimbo, gimbo, lili, lili, bing, bing. Imbi, imbi. Without a doubt. <laughs> Chief Amlumi. For the Gigerido. Hmm? Bora Daska Bivi Trulio. Don't fear the Daski and Muli True Green Man. Excuse me? Don't you understand the question? It was put in perfect Tupinambarana's dialect, as by chance I went to Eton with Prince Woroni of that very tribe. Oh, really? Yes, my lad. I was his fag. <laughs> and in the long, cold winter nights, while we huddled together in his bed, <laughs> for warmth, he taught me his language and showed me how to wrap my tongue around the harder bits. <laughs> but these two could not be expected to understand because you, my dear, are not in fact an interpreter and Chief Amlumi is not in fact an Amazonian Indian. I would like to draw the court's attention to this week's edition of The Stage. The uh, <coughs> newspaper of the theatrical profession. Here on page 47, in the classified advertising columns, we find the following insertion Hiawatha and Pocahontas. <laughs> Speciality tomahawk throwing act, unexpectedly available for pantomime following termination of residency at the Holiday Inn, Beirut. <laughs> I think Ballard will agree that the photograph is a reasonable likeness. Arrest them for perjury and contempt of court. I think you'll be free for the pantomime season after all. Oh, no, we won't. Oh, oh yes, yes, you will. <laughs> I learn. Your Lordship, surely we can come to some kind of understanding, you and I, we're both men of the world. My Lord! My Lord! 
It was me! And I killed Kerry Grout! We were in Alan's office and I was showing to Kerry how Alan used a bulletproof vest filled with fake blood to stage his own shooting. No, that's not relevant, Piers. Melinda, <laughs> uh, uh, with your permission, I'd like to put this witness on the stand. And when I realised I'd killed him, I, I got very upset and started running round and round the office, trying to decide what to do. Run, 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 and what shall I do? And then I jumped out of the window into the Thames. But luckily, I was rescued by a passing ship. Uh, why did you not come forward until now? Well, the ship was on a non-stop voyage to Thailand. <laughs> it was only when I bumped into the editor of The Sun uh, at a live sex show in Phuket <laughs> that I discovered that Alan had been arrested. And what were you doing at a live sex show in Thailand? Trying to earn my passage back to England. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Fletcher Dervish. Mr. Fletcher Dervish, what, if I may use the vernacular, my lad, a load of old bollocks? What are bollocks? <laughs> a slang expression for the gonads, my lad. Gonads. Proud, wandering folks such as the haughty Bedouin of the Arabian Desert. If your lordship pleases. And now, Mr. Fletcher Dervish, you are a university graduate, are you not? Yes, but only because my uncle gave me... And the... a member of Parliament. Yes, but only because my father held... And a barrister at law. Yes, but only because my teddy held... And yet you ask the jury to believe that you are feeble-minded enough to accidentally shoot Kerry Grout in the manner you describe. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, surely you can see through this pathetic miasma of untruth. Members of the jury, have you reached a verdict? We have. And is it the verdict of you all? Absolutely. And do you find the prisoner guilty? Yes. Or... Excellent. <laughs> is the prisoner anything to say before I pass sentence? Yes. Your Lordship. <laughs> Before you make a terrible mistake, you must realise that hanging should never have been reintroduced. It's horrific! It's barbaric! I meant to vote against it myself, but, but my brain had been addled by my medical trick. Black cap, if you please. <laughs> Alan Beresford Bastard, you've been found guilty of the most horrific and cold-blooded murder. And even though your victim was Australian, I had no compunction. In fact, it gives me great pleasure in passing the death sentence upon you. You should be taken from this place to a place of execution and there be hanged by the neck until you are dead. And may God have mercy on your soul. Happy New Year. <laughs> Any luck? Sorry, I, I pleaded with the minister, but Sir Greville just laughed. I'll kill him. But that's murder. Well, it doesn't really matter now, does it? They can't hang me twice. I could commit a hundred more murders. I could kill you. It's your fault I'm here. <laughs> You're in a stinky mood. still left your Christmas decorations up. Twelfth night was yesterday, you know. It's very unlucky. Oh, so that's why they're hanging me tomorrow, because I forgot to take my Christmas decorations down. Oh, lickers, if only someone had told me. I'm sorry, Alan. I'm really going to miss you, you know. You've been my only friend, even though you have treated me like poo-poo. It's better than being ignored. What? I said it's better than being ignored. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too, yeah. Look, Piers, just go away. All right, Alan.
Piers? Yes. Quicker. <laughs> Order! Oh, I nearly forgot. There is one piece of good news. What? A message on your answering machine from Mr. McGill. He says he's used some really cheap timber and now you stand to make a hundred grand out of the contract. <laughs> What contract? The contract to build the gallows, Piers. <laughs> Good afternoon, sir. Uh, would you mind, sir, just something up a moment? Why? Oh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's ironic, really, isn't it, sir? Me getting my old job back through your good offices and then you turning out to be my first, uh, well, uh, victim, so to speak. <laughs> uh, would you mind stepping on board, sir? <laughs> oh. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, sir, some people think that being a hangman is money for old rope. <laughs> but everything has got to be just right. Still, if there's anything I can do, sir, to ease your last moments... Yes, Sidney, there is. You can use a 25-foot rope. Oh, no, sir, it's only a 20-foot high gallows. You'd break your leg. Yeah, I'll take the risk. <laughs> oh, no, sir, no, I couldn't do that. The honour of the blisses. Besides, if anything goes wrong, it's called an act of God and the prisoner gets off. Exactly! Yes, yes! Oh, no, sir. My old man would turn in his grave if I balls it up. Look, <laughs> Sidney, I will give you an enormous amount of money. <laughs> oh, I don't need your money now, sir. My agent's expecting to be flooded with offers once I've topped you. There's talk of a summer season in Pretoria. <laughs> and a tour of South America. Oh, well, thank you, Mr. Bustard. You have been a real gent. Is there anything else I can do for you? Yes, there is, Sidney. You could be in a fatal car accident tonight. Oh, you are the one, sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, no good hanging about. Chin up, eh? <laughs> oh, sorry, sir. Looks like this is it, Alan. You've sunk about as far as you can go. Still, look on the bright side, eh? <laughs> These things can't get any worse. Alan! Oi, Alan! Over here! Jeff DeKid! Chief Obituary Writer! <laughs> Materials Reclamation Weekly! <laughs> what do you think it's going to be like being hung, then? I think it'll be a bit like this, Mr. Dickhead. Hmm? Bye. So, in fact, my dear, what you were saying was you perjured yourself. Yeah. Aren't I a naughty little girl? And do you know what the punishment is for naughty little girls who perjure themselves? <laughs> a jolly good spanking followed by a thorough seeing to. <laughs> I didn't know you'd studied law. <laughs> Silk's my favourite fabric. I must admit, my dear, when you invited me here, I assumed you were going to beg me to reprieve your husband. Oh, God, no. I invited you here to make sure you didn't. That's the last thing I want. 
And what's the first thing you want, my dear? Hey, Sarah! Hey, Sarah! Excuse me. Jeff the kid. Agony aren't exchanging Mart. So how long will it take you to get over the death of your old man and start knocking off other blokes, then? Not long, Jeff. In fact, I really feel like knocking you off now. Oh, really? Really? Oh. Now, where were we? Not now, my dear. Come and sit on my knee. It's just starting. Good evening and welcome to an ITV exclusive presentation live hanging from the National Sporting Club. Now to the highlight of the evening, the main event. The first public execution in the United Kingdom since 1868. And here is tonight's victim weighing in at 13 stone dead. That is a drop of 14 six inches. If you put your hands together and give a quick send on you, Alan of the Star. Now I'd like to introduce Alan's opponent tonight, so to speak. Uh, back after a 25-year retirement, the public executioner, Sidney Bliss. Sidney, may I just have a quick word with you, please? It must be a very special evening for you. It is, Harry. You know what I mean, Harry. <laughs> I have been training every morning at my neighbor's pig farm, so I'm not expecting any problems. Well, thank you very much indeed, Sidney. And now to the man without whom none of this would be possible, Alan Bastard. Alan! Piss off! Well, that old bastard sense of humour still exists. It won't be the same when you're dead, Alan. Oh, what a pity for you. You know, it is, it is ironic, isn't it, when you think of it? It was your vote that uh, brought back the noose and your company that brought back the gallows and built them. Ironic is not the word, Dicky. I'm just getting a word from the producer now that it's time for the big drop. Any last wishes? Oh, yes, yes. I'd like all the crowd here to join me on one last little song. Uh, there were a billion in the bed, and the little one said, Roll over, roll over, nice and slowly now. So they all rolled over, and one fell out. There was, oh, one fell out. There were 999 million in the bed. Wait, wait. <laughs> It had to be you, sir. No, no, Sydney. Sweet Jesus, no, please, Sydney. Sydney, no, please. No, but I wish I was. The utter humiliation. Whoever you got to build these gallows, sir, they they took advantage of you. They used balsa wood. <laughs> balsa wood? start amazingly reprieved by an act of God. Let us see that incredible action again in slow motion. <laughs> <laughs> 